and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where first off, I have to say, I really enjoy talking about the box office with you every week, because even when it seems at first glance like there's absolutely nothing happening, and I got a little nervous when I sat down to write the script for this late last night, I was like, whew, there's got to be a pony in there somewhere. Uh, that's an old saying when you're dealing with a pile of poop, there's a pony in there maybe somewhere, and I have to say, I dug out a couple ponies. I think there's some really interesting stuff going on here if you take a closer look. So as for the weekend, what we're really dealing with here is several movies playing out in what has become a closed system. And what I mean by that is that this year, Hollywood didn't bother to gamble with a wild card like Split. And Kevin Hart was already taken off the board with Jumanji. Although interestingly, this means that historically he's earned this title, Winter is truly Kevin Hart movie season. That's pretty nice for him. If I were his agent, I would uh, you know, send out a little card to everyone or email and be like, did you notice this? Because we certainly have. That would maybe bring his price up a little bit. But anyway, essentially there is no big new movie entering the marketplace until February 9th after Super Bowl weekend because in America, which again is the biggest movie going audience in the world, uh, recently challenged by China, but still America is the biggest. Everyone focuses on the Super Bowl all weekend long, even though it's only on Sunday night, because there's a lot of party planning involved. Uh, and of course, it's a huge night for movie trailers, and that takes up a lot of the discussion as well. I'm very excited, as I'm sure you are as well. Uh, only Lionsgate's Winchester is going to try and counter programming. And that's a, that's a smart move. It's a small horror movie. And again, since nothing else is opening, they should be able to you know, make uh, a little bit of cash. So yeah, things are going to be pretty quiet for the next two weeks, which means an intense cash grab opportunity for what's already out. Unless your awards fair, because it doesn't seem to be able to interest moviegoers whatsoever, even though it's dominating the headlines. That might be, uh, again, fascinating. This might be a side um, problem with all the how political award season has become, right? It's wonderful that it's shining a light on some important issues, but award season is supposed to shine a light on the movies that are being honored, and that's not really happening. You know, it's almost like a, a secondary headline, the subheadline, what actually won. It's what everyone cares more about. Well, I guess what's everyone, what political thing everyone talked about, what they were wearing, and then what movies won. That's, that's unfortunate, and it's also not great for these movies' box office. Although Phantom Thread, of course, is really not getting a lot of nominations, period. But anyway, Phantom Thread and Call Me By Your Name expanded this weekend to around 800 theaters. That's pretty good. But they showed little evidence in the numbers they delivered that they should expand further. You know, that you test the waters. And if you get a good per theater average with your first large expansion, then you keep expanding. Uh, I'm not surprised with Phantom Thread because it's really been a no-show this season, but Call Me By Your Name... That's kind of sad. Uh, also, Megan Ellison has truly killed Paul Thomas Anderson's career, and now it looks like she's taking Daniel, down Daniel Day-Lewis as well. I don't understand why everyone in Hollywood, at least the auteurs, haven't realized that she's their very own siren, luring them with seductive wads of cash and creative freedom into the choppy waters of working with an inexperienced producer, only for them to crash and break apart upon the rocks with no guidance, right? It's pretty clear. Uh, also, and it's not just those two, two movies. I, Tanya and The Shape of Water also added theaters, but still suffered slight drops. And then Darkest Hour and Three Billboards, Three Billboards lost some theaters, and they suffered even bigger drops. You would think that Three Billboards would be going up and up and up, considering that Hollywood has decided it's the best movie of the year. Hollywood has said this is the best that we have to offer, and uh, an audience has still said, you know what? Hard pass. That's so bad. I mean, this year's Oscar ratings are going to be so low unless Wonder Woman and or Logan get a nomination or two. Or maybe Get Out uh, has a very strong showing. Uh, and I'm sure ABC is praying for one of those things to happen. Now, as for the mainstream flicks, Jumanji continues to be the king of the jungle and has now passed Skyfall domestically to become Sony's fifth biggest movie of all time, again, after their um, core Spider-Man movies. Uh, I don't know why they haven't announced a Jumanji 2 yet. Uh, perhaps someone's holding it up. Someone? Well, it actually could be two someones uh, are holding up the deal in terms of wanting to get gets paid. But anyway, 
Uh, for 2017, it's climbed to number seven domestically. That's amazing. And it's close to unseating Pirates 5 worldwide for the number 10 spot for the year. Now, speaking of top 10s, as I predicted last week, The Last Jedi easily surpassed Frozen to take the number nine spot on the worldwide all-time list. Uh, that's just an undeniable win. But despite all that cash, or maybe because of it, the peeps at Lucasfilm are losing their cool with the detractors. Ryan Johnson continues to defend the movie aggressively. Let the cash do the talking, Ryan. And now one of the story people at Lucasfilm is also weighing in on social media. You know, Kathleen Kennedy, I understand that you don't want to get involved with all of this publicly, right? But you still need to lead behind the scenes because right now your people are running around like chickens with their heads cut off or porks. I love porks. Porks didn't really catch on. That's amazing to me. Uh, the whole movie, I mean, people are more interested in whether, the, the, the discussion as to whether or not Star Wars The Last Jedi is a good movie is just taking up all the air in the room. No one's really discussing anything else. And I'm surprised, considering there are so many people who do support the movie, that instead of fighting the detractors, Disney just doesn't shift the spotlight onto the positive comments, right? I mean, they have friends in the press. I'd be like, write me a positive article for Pete's sake. Uh, and then the press would probably say, no one's going to click on that article. <laughs> you know, that's where the problem comes in. Um, I liked it, but I think I really do feel it's like Batman v Superman. A lot of people liked it, but you can't deny that a lot of people hated it, and it's potentially damaging. And again, we have to wait. And that's, I know, that's another part of the frustration. We're not going to have a verdict on this until episode nine. Star Wars, I mean, Han Solo to some degree, but we have to wait until 2019 to understand how this all played out. Whew, that's a long time to argue about something, although we managed to do it for the DCEU. We're still doing it. All right, and once again, The Greatest Showman had the smallest drop in the top 10 and passed that century mark. That's fantastic. Hopefully, that'll ease Hugh Jackman's pain as what he thought would be an awards favorite has instead turned out to be a fan favorite. It should go to Broadway. It's so obvious. I hope that's announced as well. And then right behind The Greatest Showman is Paddington 2 with the second smallest drop in the top 10. Hooray! Although, it's going to be a real harsh lesson about the importance of business when it comes to movie making when Peter Rabbit and probably Disney's live action Christopher Robin blow this quaint charmer out of the water box office wise later this year. And they're gonna have to, that's going to be a harsh lesson for David Heyman and, his, and um, uh, the director Paul King. Uh, and something They want to make a Paddington 3. It's doing pretty well. Not as well as the first one, but I think well enough to maybe do a third. Uh, but that's something that, that that lesson. I hope that I hope they learn it. It's it's. I, mean, I think the movie's perfect as is, but you can't argue with the lower box office numbers. It's really frustrating. All right, because I mean, as good as the movie is, it didn't connect with audiences. Maybe we'll see how it does on streaming. So as for the weekend's new releases, yes, there were some. This is great. So 12 Strong followed the 13 hours release strategy, even down to the title. 12 Strong, 13 Hours, oh Hollywood, sometimes they're so transparent. And they wound up, get this, with the exact same opening. As we've discussed before, box office patterns do exist. Uh, and that's why Hollywood is so good at predicting uh, box office. Hopefully this is the last of old Chris Hemsworth and his career truly has turned a corner. Or will he not be able to make box office lightning strike twice? I really thought he was so good in Thor Ragnarok, but he just cannot get his non-Marvel career off the ground. All right, then Den of Thieves opened per usual for a Gerard Butler flick, and the trades insist this is business as usual for a movie like this, which is designed to make money overseas and in the ancillary market, streaming, airplanes, hotels, etc. And then for some reason, a Lifetime movie opened in theaters this weekend, and still more people went to see it than three billboards and other awards fair. <laughs> the divide in this country continues to grow. Hollywood should be a uniter. All right, and I think it's possible. Now, as for this coming weekend, the last before Super Bowl weekend, uh, the final Maze Runner movie has the franchise set to open at its lowest point. And then Hostiles, oh, this is great. Hostiles has seen an opportunity. There's no big movies in the marketplace. Maze Runner is pretty much DOA. So Hostiles is going to go super wide in 3,000 theaters to try and capture an audience. And maybe since award season has totally ignored it, that means audiences might actually be interested. I think this is a fabulous little movie. As I said in my review, it's not necessarily theater worthy, but hey, it's going to be a slow weekend. And I, I would actually recommend at least checking it out as a matinee because it's very, very good. And you, you can check out my review via the link in the video description. Uh, and that's this week's movie math. As always, thanks for going over the box office with me. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts down below. And as always, you can check out some more videos, including that Hostiles review right now.